You were never supposed to notice this part of the system. Most people don't. But once you see it, you can't unsee it. Before we get into this part of the conversation, I need to give you some context that never made it onto the recording so that this doesn't feel like it just dropped out of the sky. Landry over at Modern Men Lost again invited me on for an interview, and before he hit record, he and I talked for a long time. In that off-camera conversation, we walked through the deeper background, the long arc behind how we got here, how these technologies developed, and how they ended up shaping the world that we're living in right now. So when he asked the question again on camera, I gave the short version, and a lot of the pieces that make this all make sense didn't make it into this clip. The technologies that we're about to talk about, AI, quantum computing, automation, digital dependency, these things didn't appear out of nowhere. They're not sudden inventions. And the direction that they're moving didn't start in the last year or even the last decade. This section is really about that trajectory. We talked about all of this before the cameras were rolling, but I want you to have enough of that context so that you're not missing the bigger picture behind what you're about to hear. Because this isn't the beginning of anything. It's just gotten to the point where everything that's been in motion for decades has finally started to become visible to everyone. And now that you're caught up, let's get into it. So where do you think this ends? I mean, maybe this isn't a good question to, to go to here, but I mean, I, I'm just, I'm always fascinated by brainstorming the potential downfalls, where we go, like what this does, what it all means, what life looks like in 20. 30 years. Do you have any sort of guesses here? Are we looking at uh, something, you know, that's never happened before? What would you think would be your best uh, assumption? Technocratic authoritarianism. So like 1984, that sort of thing? Par, par excellence, yeah. With a, with a really ugly uh, AI. Think, think about this one. When they finally get to a point that they can take AI and combine that with quantum, it, game over. Game over. Everything around you can be analyzed almost instantaneously. All these legacy encryption that's protected, all of your conversations and all this other stuff gets cracked wide open. You're in a like even even the blockchains that are protecting cryptocurrencies, unless they're quantum secure, they're vulnerable. the The entire trust model that we've built around technology it's been flawed from the very beginning, but once these technologies come fully online and i'm sure I, I can't say with authority this is just a personal opinion but i'm sure they've already got something that we're not aware of pretty much everything that you see is about 20 years behind what government actually has um, which raises some really interesting questions to anybody that's dealt with ai what do they have because if this is the version that we see oh my god what are they using um, but once you crack open quantum and quantum becomes stable and they can actually use it and you hand that as the engine to power AI, uh, it's game over for any sort of privacy concerns. You know, the, this is, I, I mean, ultimately it's the dream of man since hierarchies between leaders in, and those being led have begun. There's always been people that thought that they should rule the world as they've known it. And I mean, ultimately, that's where you're headed when you give them the tools and the technology to actually do it. I mean, we're kidding ourselves if we don't think that's where this is ultimately leading. That's my two cents on that. Yeah, with what you said with the 20, 20 years ahead and all that, it's like I've heard that before. I've always questioned the validity of that because some people argue that it's true with uh, many things, but not now. And they say that, that the reason for that is because the companies that are that are doing this are all um, competing with each other, which is the, to say that they're not going to let things you know that are happening not be released to the public. But uh, so, what would you say is is being withheld here? So, I mean, how advanced would what they have? At, well, I guess you said you have some sort of firsthand. Um, I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll give you. I'll give you the first time I realized it was in the first Gulf War. Um, not the one that we just did with George W. Bush, but his dad, um, the Humvee that was debuted in 90, I guess, 96, I think is when the Gulf, the first Gulf war, uh, happened. They'd been using it since like 1980. It, and all it was, was a glorified Jeep, but no one had ever heard of it before. 
and that's just like the first example that I had picked up on in my own life. But uh, here's one that everybody should should be able to relate to: the Capri Sun juice pouch that was in your lunchbox as a kid started out in like the 1960s as uh, water rations in humanitarian aid packs and the water rations in the ejection seats of fighter planes. And that's just a juice pouch. All they did was take that water pouch, put some sugar and flavoring and some coloring in it and turn it into a consumer product. Pretty much everything you have around you, the laptop, that was originally military stuff. Um, Self-driving cars, originally military stuff. The internet, originally military stuff. Your cell phone and everything in it, originally military stuff. If you were alive when smartphones were released, we were using CRT monitors that were three feet deep, weighed 150 pounds, and a giant tower computer. And suddenly they're handing us touch screens with gyroscopes in them and like all of these capabilities. And no one stopped and went, whoa, where'd this come from? It's all old military technology. The communication radios in it, all old military technologies. It's a spread spectrum burst transmitter, all old military technology. Most of the stuff around you is all old military technology. So when you're looking at the stuff around you, we take all of this stuff for granted, but it, most of it started its life with a completely different purpose before it was commercialized. Look at the things that Elon Musk does. The rocket program, that's all old mil, uh, missile technology. He's got his boring company. That is the MX missile rapid deployment system. When he actually talks about that moving super fast in these vacuum tunnels, that was the system that they were going to use for the MX missile for, they were going to store them basically under a mountain and then rapid deploy them in this ring and break them up through the surface and launch them off. Almost everything he's doing is, is commercialized military technology. We're all ignorant to this stuff because we just kind of take it for granted and run with it. But, uh, and move forward to AI. This is what we're being shown. Do you really honestly think that they would give you something more powerful than what they have? Of course not. Right. So how far behind them are we? 20 years with AI and quantum? It could be 50 years at this point. You know, so it's like, where's it going? I don't know. You give human beings a massive amount of power in an ignorant population, where do you think it's going to go? All right. If you've made it this far, you can probably feel it now, that shift in your understanding. The realization that the world that you're living in didn't just turn out this way. It's followed a blueprint to get here. ARPA built the first version of the internet in the 1960s, and even back then, the people involved warned that it would ultimately destroy individual privacy. DARPA and the RAND Corporation were building artificial intelligence when your parents or grandparents were teenagers. NASA, SRI, MITRE, and Bell Labs were developing robotics, automation, and machine vision before anyone even had a home computer. And quantum research began decades before the public had ever even heard the word. So when quantum and AI merge, when automated systems replace more and more human jobs, when the systems that run society depend less and less on people, understand that isn't an accident. It's a roadmap reaching its next waypoint. And that's why I break these things down in plain English. I'm not trying to scare anyone. I'm not trying to hype anything. I'm not selling anything. I do this because the average person deserves to know the truth, that this world was built by design and with a purpose in mind. And now we're entering the phase where the whole systems become visible. This is the moment where you need to understand what you're walking into. If you want to go deeper into the larger arc behind all of this, how AI actually started, where it's headed, how these systems collide, and the military roots of the internet, I've linked three videos that fill in the rest of the picture. The first one is where did AI come from? Where will it take us? This is the real history of AI, what sparked it, and the direction that it's pushing all of us now. Then there's AI quantum robotics, the coming collision, how these technologies converge and what happens when they all mature at the same time, which is exactly what's being engineered. And the last one is the secret military history of the internet, the real origins of our digital world. It was built for war, not freedom. And I explain how that architecture became the backbone of modern surveillance. Each one of these videos builds on what we talked about here and fills in the pieces that you were never supposed to connect. Now, I want to hear from you. Does this long arc make more sense now? 
Do you see the direction that we're all heading? And let me ask you guys this. What's an example of a technology that you saw debut in public that you later learned had been used by government or defense for years beforehand? I'm curious to see what patterns you guys have noticed. Tell me in the comments. And until we sit down together again, be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and for God's sake, be mindful of what you're letting into your life when you let technology in.